Good morning, everybody. Good morning, so for the next uh, 15, 20 minutes, what I'm going to talk about is primarily about a journey, a journey that we all have together. It's a journey of life. We all are together in this journey. How does it start off? It starts off with a breathing and you start crying. And certainly one day it ends with a breath out. And everybody else cries, probably, if you're successful. And how does this period look like? It's an event, isn't it? It's an event which has, if you really look at, primarily at life. It comprises of some 40 to 60 years, 70 years. That's the time frame that you're there. We all of us are here in this uh, world. And primarily comprises of around 2,500 to 3,000 or 4,000 meetings. Not more than that, by the way. And that's the event which we all are part of. <coughs> And how do we leave that event? How do we make it eventful is primarily, completely in our hands. And the best part of it is that we ourselves are the event manager in this wonderful event. How exciting this event is going to be, this life journey, depends on us. Factors are always there, which plays its own role. But normally, if you really look at life, how does it occur generally? Many a times you will see, we leave, we will make this event more of a puppet show. But we are the puppets in the show. Somewhere there is an invisible screen up there, we feel, which is pulling and pushing us, moving us, in a different direction in life, allowing us to do things which many a times probably we don't want to do. We make a career out of an area where in our priority we don't want to make a career in. We are stuck in work, stuck in job, where maybe we're not unhappy every day. Is it really the best way to live that event and becoming a puppet in a puppet show? That's the question which we try to find answer to today. And that's my purpose. If you really look at uh, life in general, and there is always that force that we reckon with, the string somebody is pulling, we give various names to it. And people whom we worship, you know, if you really look at, uh, say, Jesus Christ, Krishna, or Nana, living souls who have been in this world, they all primarily spoke of one key thing that you need to reflect, look within yourself, because you are not a puppet. You are the event manager. Reflection, look within, because the power lies within you. That's the prime statement, that's the basic outcome of most spiritual and religion in a religious body. So basically it says you need to look within yourself. You need to look at, reflect at life, allow the string to be pulled by your own self. Don't allow anybody else and dance with that flow where you don't want to go. And the good part is you know, in our Vedic system, as we enter life, it has been beautifully explained. And how many of you really know of? The, I mean, we all probably have heard it somewhere or the other. There are four stages to life, right? One is, you know, you start what you call as Brahmacharya, then you have Grihastha, then you have something called Manaprastha, then you have Sanyasa. Brahmacharya is, uh, you know, the eight to 18 age bracket, when you are dependent on others. Then you get into the next stage, which is the 
uh, you know, which is the stage value uh, 18 to 40. And then comes Vanaprastha, which is 40 to 65, and after 65, the Sanyasa. So, you know, the, the Grihastha stage is when you become a householder, basically, and you live your active life. And Vanaprastha is as you approach 40, somebody like, and you need to start with drawing some life, go out and talk and preach and travel. That's the reason why I'm here as I approach 40 and another three, four years, you know, slowly trying to uh, go in and share knowledge with people. And then you, after 65, is slowly and steadily you're going towards moksha. That's the way it's been explained. Now, what happens to our life? All of you want to be successful, right? I mean, the very fact that you are either an engineer student or a management student, with some purpose, you are here. You have some clear goals in life. You want to make a success out of life. How many of you want to become a success in life? Just raise hand. Young crowd, everybody wants to become a success in life. How do you define success? Now that definition is what we need to look at. Now, what normally happens, and that's the way the education system works. Okay, uh, how many of you are engineering students? <coughs> Most of you, okay. And how many of you had history as your favorite subject when you were in school? My God, look at the number. Now, does it say something? And that's the story of most of our life. Because of that puppet show, we need to look good. We need to get into areas which sounds good. But it might just happen that every day, I'm not saying that it's going to happen, but I'm just saying because within that area also you can do a lot of work which is very close to your heart. But the fact remains that if you look at some statistics, I didn't want to quote these statistics here, but as you raise the number numbers that I saw, from the age bracket of 30 to 45, they say maximum heart attack happens on a Monday morning between 8.30 to 10 a.m. I'm aware of it. It's a fact. Because people are stuck in jobs, in work, and they hate going on a Monday morning. The Monday morning hits you, the Monday blues. And the pressure takes a toll on your life. So the 2500 weekend, which is any out there, further reduces. Now if you really look into the Indian education system, there's a lot of emphasis, and as one of our speakers pointed out, the focus, the IITs, the medicals, you know, these are the uh, areas which, and during our time it was, it was more, and now I think, you know, things are changing. We see a lot of difference in terms of modern education system, there's expansion of various fields which happen. Still it's there. Now what is it this education system talks of? It, there's a lot of emphasis in the education system, primarily on the IQ part of it. Am I right? You need good IQ if you want to succeed in life. Anybody disagrees with that? Nobody. And suddenly somebody did raise hand and is or she is or you know, some people who is right. And the fact is, we fight towards our IQ, we give those tests, the entrance exams, we get through, and then we get into a job. And suddenly we realize it's not IQ. And you know that's the reason we spoke about meetings, how do we brainstorm, how do we create success, how do we become an entrepreneur, those are areas where you suddenly realize that if you want to succeed in the corporate world, the second factor is also which is important, which is something called EQ, emotional quotient. Am I right? So the IQ transforms into EQ to succeed. And suddenly a lot of people give up. But as you grow in life, I mean, and they say there's something called mid you know, mid-carrier crisis, mid-age crisis, a lot of technologies are given to it. But primarily, even if you become a CEO in an organization, you grow in a, a you know, in an area, suddenly you realize, you know, because of a combination of the IQs and EQs, suddenly you realize, you know, that question starts fitting. 
And that's the reason you see most entrepreneurs are formed at the age of 40. You just wonder, what am I doing in life? How is it that I'm going to make this life meaningful? What is it that I'm going to do? Is this the work that I'm going to do for the rest of my life? The Monday morning blues, am I going to continue with? When is it that I'm going to transform my life from thank God it's Friday to thank God it's Monday? This is the question we start asking ourselves, in spite of the fact that we've grown in life. And if you want to succeed, and if you want to see and make your life a TGIM life, a thank God it's Monday life, you need to have one more question, which we most of the time we forget, which is PQ, the passion question. It is passion which makes a man actually successful. You know, if I ask you to, we don't have the time, if I ask you to closely, you know, think for a second and look at the person that you think and you really idealize in life as successful, whatever name comes into your mind, and if you visualize and look into that name, it can be Sachin Tendulkar for somebody, it can be Mahatma Gandhi, it can be Subhash Chandra Bose, it can be Vivekananda, it can be, uh, you know, whichever name comes into your mind. You know, all these people are not monetarily successful in the true sense of both. What really will come into your mind if you look into their faces, they all were passionate about what they wanted to do in life. Sachin Tendulkar would have not survived for so many years with that first first cricket. If you look into his face, what actually oozes out is passion. He might have got those byproduct of success. But what actually, if you look into the photograph of Vivekananda, what actually uses out is passion. And that's what is the truth. It's all about. If you want to be success in life, you need to know where your passion lies. For me, it's been a journey where I had to take certain calls in life. From being somebody who was taking care of a business in a multinational bank in a particular vertical, I moved into the trading arena. And that's been the most wonderful. Though the economy for the last five years were in doldrums, that was the area that I've been in. But that's been the most eventful part of my life. That's when I, and if I look back, I was always good at electrician. I always wanted to connect with people. And somewhere it came in and it hit me. And that's where I, where I want to make my purpose in life. Where I want to make my head. Those questions, the quicker you can answer, you don't, probably will not be able to, you know, unmuckle all the areas of it. But the fact is that, in the next few minutes, but the fact is that you will ask this question and everybody has the answer somewhere or the other. And what is that passion all about? And how do you identify your passion? So we'll spend a few minutes just to find out what we call as the passion triangle, what I call. And this is some work I've done in this particular area. So when you talk of passion, it primarily has three key elements to it. One is what we call the past. Second is what we call the possibility. And the third is what we call as the purpose. The three P's of the passion triangle. What is past? You know, some point of time, you need to take some decisions in life. You need to decide as to what you want to do in life. You need to decide that I want to make it a success. And for that, certain decisions need to be taken. It can be a career decision. It can be starting early and, you know, previous speaker spoke of, being in the social sector, very early in life. Decisions. These are all about decisions. Out from IIT, at the age of 21, becoming an entrepreneur, decisions in life. These are not easy decisions in life. And how do you take those decisions? What happens whenever you need to take a decision in life? As you step into 
any of those areas which are unknown. What works? You know, you look into a future, a bright future, and you want to step into that future, and suddenly the little voice starts talking to you. It's not for you. This is not something which can happen in your life. You can't be a success. What happens if you fail? What happens? What will people say? That's the reason history became engineering. Now, the question is, it's the past which always plays its role. But the fact is that the past has already happened. You know, there's something called a blue ocean theory in the strategy side. Now, life is actually the same role is played in life. When you look into the past, we, what we do is, instead of the, all those past fears and stories that we have, I have not been good in school, I have not done well, I have been a failure, I have failed so many times, this has happened, that has happened, all the stories slowly moves into your future. And when you look into a future, which is actually a blue ocean, there is nothing in this future. You really don't know how it's going to pan out. But all this past that you have, you have all transferred those past into your future, and those are playing its own game with you. And that stops you from taking certain decisions in life. And that is how the role of past is out here. I don't know whether you understood it or not, but the fact is that the past can transform the future. Whenever we want to look into the unknown beautiful future, which is the what we are there to beautify and you know make it painted our own way, the past gets in and plays havoc in the future. And that's exactly what we need to be stopped. And as you move in, then you move to the next the next P, which is possibility. You need to clearly come out with your own possibility statement. Because the future is all about possibility. And personally, I've experienced, I don't want to get into those stories, but the fact is that anything that you want to create, there has to be a clear possibility that you can create for yourself. I have a very recent example. As much as few hours back, this is about my own family, my wife. And I just thought I'd share it, but it's not a, nothing un unplanned, completely unplanned. Last month, suddenly she, there is a women's car rally which happened in Gurgaon to Jaipur. You know, it's a all India fairly big on the women's side. She wanted to get into the women's car rally. And if you, if you want to get into a pass, look into those. You know, there's no connection. She was a journalist, now she's moved into the teaching area, teaches in a school, nothing to do with car rallies. The possibility that she created, I want to do it, I want to experience it. And yesterday night at 11.30, I get a call from Jaipur that she was the winner of Women's Car Rally, all India. And 90 different cars, some 500 people. Completely unbelievable for any of us. Now to me, it became a story of possibility. And that possibility exists in each one of us. That possibility existed with me in many a times. I can in all aspects of your life, if you can bring in possibility. If you tell yourself that I am going to be a successful entrepreneur, that's a possibility that you've created. It can be in health issues. I don't want to get into it. I don't know how much time is there. But there are numerous examples I can take from my own personal life. Are you getting the answer, what is possibility all about? And create your possibility statement. For example, for me, my possibility statement is very clear. And I've shared with my, you know, my superiors in the organization, people who are there around me, I have a possibility of authenticity, connectivity, love, and energy. That's my possibility. So any work, any area that I work on, it is important that I have any of this four possibility is playing its own role. And if you are clear about your possibility, you will see how a purposeful life starts unfolding and you start living a life of passion. And once you have this two in place, your, you know, your past, you're complete with your past, and you're complete with the possibility, and you move to a clear purpose in your life. What am I in this world for? What is that I want to do in this life? That's a purpose statement that you need to clear. You need to clearly define your purpose. Move away with the past stories, move away with all the stories that is there ingrained with you, all the failures that you had in the past, create a possibility in life, with that come up with the purpose. And when this thing combines, you're a lethal weapon. 
of a passion person, a person full of passion, a person who lives a passionate life. And these are the people whom, if you look at them, look into their faces, they exist. They exist in many elements of your life. And you'll find maybe a lot of them today when they stand and speak out here. So live your passionate life. Understand the passion triangle. It's a very simple way of defining three P's of your life. And this is you are at the right time, at the right age, to make it happen. Thank you very much.